Welcome to Top Down Countdown. Today we are going to take a look at the top James Bond's movies from 1962 to 2021. So, sit back, relax, have popcorn and subscribe. Number 10. Dr. No. 1962. This movie is about Agent 007 who decides to battle against an eccentric scientist. Dr. No, who is determined to ruin the U.S. space program. For this purpose, he goes to Jamaica to deal with this megalomaniac. This is the first movie of James Bond franchise and the most popular quote from movies Bond, James Bond, was started from this movie. In Teeley, Sean Connery was supposed to say I am James Bond, but he went off script and said Bond, James Bond. When this movie hit the theaters on 1962, it seemed like an another spy movie but it introduced Ian Fleming's gentleman spy character James Bond to audiences before Sean Connery was cast. The producers considered Stanley Baker, Rex Harrison, Trevor Howard, Richard Johnson, Patrick McGuhan, David Niven, and Richard Todd. Niven would go on to play a spoof of Bond in 1967 Casino Royale. Initially, Eunice Gason was set to play Miss Monopenny and Lois Maxwell was set to play Sylvia Trench. However, Director Terence Young felt that Gason had more appealing sexuality, while Maxwell was good in punctuality, so they switched roles. Number 9. Casino Royale 2006, in summary. This is about Special Agent James Bond embarks on a mission to prevent Le Chiffre, a mob banker, from winning a high-stakes poker game. He is aided by Vesper Lind a British Treasury agent. When Casino Royale was in discussion, Quentin Tarantino expressed interest in directing it. However, he wanted to set it like in the 60s, shoot it in black and white, and feature Pierce Brosnan as a Bond. Since the producers wanted to reboot the franchise and start from scratch, they rejected Tarantino's pitch. There was a widespread controversy in the Bond fan base when Daniel Craig was cast, because 007 is traditionally dark-haired while Craig is blonde. He was even dubbed James Blonde. Number 8. You Only Live Twice 1967, an American space capsule supposedly gets abducted by a Russian spaceship. However, as James Bond discovers that Spectre is responsible for it, he embarks on a mission to unearth the motive behind it, as this was anticipated to be Sir Sean Connery's last appearance as James Bond. Publicity material released in advance of the movie announced Bond would be killed, married, and become Japanese. While these events were portrayed in this movie, they were actually tricks as part of Bond's undercover activities. Number 7. No Time to Die, 2021 James Bond is enjoying a tranquil life in Jamaica after leaving active service. However, his peace is short-lived as his old CIA friend, Felix Later, shows up and asks for help. The mission to rescue a kidnapped scientist turns out to be far more treacherous than expected, leading Bond on the trail of a mysterious villain who's armed with a dangerous new technology. Sound design of this movie is hugely adopted from video games. Director Fukunaga credits video games for its immaculate sound design, citing Call of Duty for the metallic sort of clank when it comes to machine gun. Number 6. The Spy Who Loved Me, 1977 After the Royal Navy Polaris submarine carrying 16 nuclear warheads mysteriously disappears, James Bond teams up with Major Anya Amasova, whose lover he had killed in Austria. Lifelong Bond fan Steven Spielberg was working on a little shark movie called Jaws. The 007 producers considered hiring Spielberg to direct The Spy Who Loved Me but waited to see how Jaws would perform at the box office before making a firm offer. Jaws was so popular and became the highest grossing movie of all time. Jaws' success ended up influencing the creation of the Bond villain of the same name for this movie. Number 5. Live and Let Die 1973 James Bond is sent to New York to investigate the mysterious deaths of British agents. On his journey, he meets a voodoo master and a tarot card reader. After the success of Diamonds Are Forever producer Albert R. Broccoli tried to convince Sean Connery to return as 007 once again, but he declined. 
A backup bond was already in place in the form of American-born John Gavin. Was previously offered and accepted the role of James Bond for Diamonds Are Forever. Among the British actors the pair considered for Bond were Julian Glover, Jeremy Brett, Simon Oates, John Ronane, William Gaunt, Michael Billington, future Bond Timothy Dalton and Roger Moore. Number 4. The Living Daylights 1987. James Bond must cross several continents to confront and defeat an arms dealer who is conspiring with a Soviet general to start another world war for profit. After Roger Moore retired from the role of 007 following 1985 view to a kill, three actors were shortlisted for the screening. Sam Neill, Pierce Brosnan and Timothy Dalton. Sam Neill's chance was vetoed by Cubby Broccoli and Pierce Brosnan's chance was lost when the makers of Remington Steel refused to release him from his contract. That left Timothy Dalton, who got his chance after he'd decided against being Bond in 1969 on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Dalton was 24 in 1968 and thought himself too young to play 007. Number 3. On Her Majesty's Secret Service 1969. James Bond sets out a mission to defeat Blofeld, who hypnotizes beautiful women to fulfill his evil motives. Meanwhile, he also falls in love with a crime. There are just as many factors that explain why Canary ended up leaving the role as there are for why he returned for Diamonds Are Forever. Sean Canary was simply fed up with the role. He felt he was constantly underpaid, mobbed by fans at every turn, and at the time was not on speaking terms with producer. Cubby Broccoli Number 2. Goldfinger 1964 MI6 agent James Bond investigates a gold smuggling ring run by businessman Oric Goldfinger. As he delves deeper into his activities, he uncovers a sinister plan to attack Fort Knox's gold reserves. Goldfinger, which was published in 1959, was the seventh title in author Ian Fleming's series of novels about gentleman spy James Bond and its premise sprang from a chance encounter three years earlier. In 1956, Fleming was staying at Anton Hall, an English health spa, when he happened to strike up a conversation with a broker who specialized in gold. As he picked the man's brain about the gold trade for a while, the seed that would grow into Goldfinger was planted. Number 1. From Russia with Love 1963, James Bond searches for a lector cryptographic device that has the potential to wreak havoc in the world and stop Spectre, a secret crime organization, from acquiring it, whereas Dr. No had focused on Jamaica as a primary setting. The filmmakers had hoped that From Russia with Love would be a showcase for Europe. However, Cold War prevented filming behind the Iron Curtain. The film also needed to qualify for the British film funding available at the time to ensure that the production expenses could be met. In order to qualify, at least 70% of the film needed to be shot either in the UK or in the Commonwealth. Therefore, key overseas locations were filmed in the UK instead. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe, share and hit that like button.